with all of the patients referred here and all of the activity in small children, there wasn't so much neonatal cardiac surgery then, but many operations in small babies, that over the years, uh, UAB has become a tremendous uh, repository of patients with congenital heart disease who have had operations uh, and uh, come back for further therapy. There was a group of the pediatric cardiologists led by Mac Bargeron <clears throat> who focused not only on small children, but they would follow these babies and children throughout their lives. And so they uh, developed uh, a large following, if you will, of, of patients who became adults with congenital heart disease who needed reoperations and further care. And so uh, Mac Bargeron and his colleague Ed Colvin, and then later a, a, a cardiologist named Walt Johnson began to spend part of their time taking care of these adults with, with congenital heart disease. So uh, it's perhaps not surprising that any time you have a a program with such a long history of serious involvement that almost by definition that you're going to have uh, a large cadre of patients who need care, surgical care, as adults. Well, the problem with congenital heart disease is several things. One is that many forms of congenital heart disease are, you can receive operations that are curative. There remains the substrate in the myocardium, the heart muscle, of, of, of fundamental abnormalities. And when you combine the, the potential problem of, of the surgical procedure itself eventually wearing out, if you will, valves put in that degenerate, uh, conduits that are placed that gradually become obstructive, uh, plus the underlying tendency for, for the heart muscle in some of these congenital malformations to be abnormal and get more abnormal as the years pass. And finally, the realization that, that maybe 30 to 50 percent of patients with congenital heart disease do not have a normal life expectancy despite having a surgical correction. Uh, they are vulnerable for other cardiac problems or worsening of their existing problems for the rest of their lives. If you couple that with the fact that most standard adult cardiologists have a very limited experience and understanding of the subtleties of congenital heart disease, you can see that you have a construct for, for these patients not getting really first-class care uh, when they evolve into adults and they're in a small town or community that may or may not have heart surgery, but certainly doesn't have congenital heart surgeons or, or pediatric cardiologists. So for them to, to, to take advantage of what has already been done for them in terms of correcting their congenital heart disease, it's critically important that they be followed and followed by people who are expert. Because if they don't, they either die prematurely or develop complications which could be corrected and become eventually inoperable uh, for a variety of reasons because they've just waited so long without the uh, availability of care that now their hearts are advanced enough in the, in the stages of deterioration that we can't do anything surgically. So it is critically important for patients who have congenital heart disease and have operations or who are being followed that that continues on into adulthood. An interesting statistic is that as of several years ago, there are actually more surviving patients with adult congenital heart disease than there are children with a congenital heart disease. That's how big the population of adults with congenital heart disease currently is getting. Many of these patients receive an operation, they go about a reasonably normal life with reasonable functional capacity. And when things change, they change rather slowly. And so very gradually, they become more disabled and limited. And there is a, there is a great need to disseminate knowledge about, about adult congenital heart disease to the, throughout the state of Alabama and the Southeast so that practitioners who aren't necessarily cardiologists, 
patients and their family, as well as adult cardiologists, begin to have, a, have an awareness of exactly what can go wrong with adult congenital patients and that we have a facility here whose major mission is to provide care for them and, and, uh, and consultative advice. And <clears throat> we see several times a week patients that uh, come to Mark Cribbs or our adult cardiologists or even to myself that uh, other uh, practitioners are just uncomfortable with the rarity of the condition and the unusual manifestations when they're getting worse. So it's very important that we get the message out that we have a, a capacity at UAB to provide unusually good care for these patients and that they don't need to just gradually get worse, become more limited, and die from these conditions that in fact, it's very standard as for us to be able to add five, 10, 15 more years of useful life to them if we know about them.